What's up everybody, how are we doing today? This is PJ with the High Mountain Homestead and I am really excited for this video. It has been something that has literally been six months in the making. Um, ever since I did my first video on the channel, which was just 30 days with sheep, um, I have learned a lot more about these animals and I'm really excited to talk with you about what I've learned. Um, if you're new here to the channel, welcome. I hope you stick around. Uh, but uh, we were, we're a homesteading operation. We care about better soil, better plants, and better animals. And uh, we're, we're on an acre and a quarter. And I did not grow up homesteading or anything of the sort. I grew up in Southern California right next to the beach. So why do I have sheep? Maybe I'll do a video on that later. But uh, the point is I don't really know everything about this. I don't know much about it. So the point of this video is to show here's what I've learned in my first six months with sheep. Let's get to it. All right, let me get right to the first and most obvious point, and that is that keeping a intact ram is really hard and has a lot of challenges. My ram was, I don't know if he's more aggressive or not than your average ram, but uh, there was a time I was carrying some sod that I was gonna plant in the backyard, and he saw it, and he charged me in the knee, and I broke skin or he broke the skin and like I was like I kicked him and it, it, it wasn't a good day um, that was stuff that I had no idea I would have to deal with in raising raising sheep and so luckily right now I don't have a ram that ram is in a pasture where he has lots of room to run and mate with whatever you he wants so that's that's great for him um, which is not a euphemism that actually is what he's doing right now so I, instead of keeping a ram, I have a, an all-you operation and then I rent a ram at the end of the year. So, pretty sweet scenario. Six months ago, I did not think that would be my scenario. But here I am today without my ram and I couldn't be happier. I feel like I should film an infomercial about like, I gave away my ram and you should too. Um, that's not the best choice for everybody, but with the amount of views I had and the space, that I have to work with, it just was, it just wasn't a great, uh, it just was not a great setup. In no particular order, second thing that I want to talk about with sheep is that lambing season is a lot of work. Where is? Oh, there she is, right there. Okay, so this mom on the left and this you on the right. Uh, by the way, what what a cute little lamb she is my favorite lamb um, but she was stuck inside mom and labor was over an hour and ended with my neighbors coming over to help pull her out okay another thing that I had no idea of about sheep is noise so I have chickens I'll walk over because we're walking and talking I'll show you the chickens um, when, when I got chickens I was stressing like oh no like I'm so even though I am zoned residential agriculture, I was so nervous about having chickens for the rooster crowing. And I tell you, like my roosters crow now, my sheep are way louder and way more frequent than roosters crowing. Anyway, those are chickens. You're here to look at sheep, not chickens. <coughs> but I had no idea that sheep could be that loud. I also had no idea that I would be able to tell between my three mature ewes which one was buying um, like at a distance. Like I can tell like, oh, Winifred, like she's so loud back there. I can tell like she is very distinct. Okay, food consumption. I had no idea that sheep eat so dang much. So I bought them in the winter and I was feeding them dry alfalfa and then, um, you know, spring comes and they start eating grass off the ground and my gosh do they eat like a lot um part of me worries about that i have if i have the land enough for it if i find that i don't this year maybe i'll offload one of my adult ewes and, and go down to a 4 u operation instead of a 5 u operation but uh, we will see uh, this this mom right here she is always eating and i think it's probably because she has twins to feed while my other two ewes uh, have singles Maybe, maybe not. Maybe she just likes to eat. But uh, man, they eat all the time. And on that note, 
uh, you hear the reputation that sheep have that they eat down like down to the nub of the grass it is so true oh my gosh so about every two or three weeks I move my sheep to my front yard which moving sheep is a whole nother thing that I wasn't dealing with six months ago but uh, I, I set up an electric fence in the front yard I have a huge front yard way bigger than I want it to be I would rather have that grass back here but it gives me an opportunity to move them so I keep the sheep there for about five days and those sheep, man, they, the difference in grass is, is apparent. There are some spots that are just bare, bare, bare. Then there are other spots that, you know, I've got three inch grass. And that reputation that these guys have of eating, um, eating that stuff down to the nub really is true. That really is what they do. Uh, you'll see right here. Like right here, get down lower right here I've got this great patch of grass really really good and then right next to it very thin very thin they're picky another stereotype about sheep that I really didn't want to believe is a lot of people say sheep are stupid and and I didn't like hearing that and and I don't think it's true still but I will say they are stubborn and sometimes they do dumb things, but I don't think they're stupid. Um, but like there's so many times where I'm moving them through that fence right there, through that gate, and uh, they just cannot figure it out. Like some of them will get through and the other ones will just butt the fence and it's like, you just saw, you just saw your mom walk through that hole in the fence. Just go through that hole in the fence. Nope. They they'll just butt the fence and it gets them nowhere so that uh, that's it's not really frustrating it's just it's frustrating to see that stereotypes might have some validity but uh, they're not stupid I still I still would not say that they're stupid they just do dumb things and they're very stubborn okay another thing um, they nap a lot and I think that's because with them eating all this grass they need more time to really like chew the cud and so they take a lot of little siestas throughout the day when they get shade, which, who doesn't love that? Okay, um, if I can get real for a second, I did not know within six months how much I would really, like, grow fond of these sheep and how, how much uh, personality I would see that each of them has. Uh, like, for instance, Demeter, this you right here, super friendly, really, really cool. Um, these these lambs all have individual personalities. That bigger you back there. Oh, I called her Demeter. That's Diana. This is Demeter. Uh, Demeter is, is mean. She's my most ornery one, and her daughter is the most ornery of the lambs. Uh, she'll like stamp her feet at me, uh, which is cute when it's a lamb, but I'm not looking forward to it when it's a you know a hundred plus pound you getting ornery with me. But. Uh, they have their own personalities. It's very, very cool. It is not cool when it's 9 o'clock at night and I go back here to put up the chickens and the personality of being friendly and loud takes over because, like I said, they're so loud um, sometimes. I notice that they get loud when it's hot, uh, probably because I need to shear them or I should shear them. On the note of shearing, so I these are Dorper, by the way. Um, I've got a few vi videos on why I love Dorper sheep, but... Um, besides the looks because they just look really cool but these sheep are supposedly like self shearing which you can see which you can see right here she's starting to shear um, we've had some days in the in the high 90s so I if I were her I'd want less wool on me but they totally self shear the reputation was that that I perceived at least is like oh yeah you'll never need to shear these sheep they self shear and it is June already. It's getting real hot. And if I were them, I'd be wishing I didn't have that coat. So um, I still feel like <clears throat> for beyond cosmetic reasons, like for functionality, you should be shearing these sheep. That's something I didn't know when, when I first got them. I got them in November, December, or something like that. And they were, they love their wool coat and they look great in it. But now uh, I could tell they, 
probably don't want it. Another thing that I've learned is uh, minerals. They don't go for minerals as much as they did when I first got them, which is kind of interesting. And it's hot right now, so you'd think they'd be chomping on that salt, uh, but they don't really go for it much, or, or not as much as they used to. So that's just a little tidbit. Okay, I could go on. This video is already getting kind of long, but uh, one, one more thing that I do want to say. So, if you can't tell, I have some trees, and in the fall, there are so many leaves. And when I bought the sheep, I was so stressed about bloat, because you hear all these stories about sheep bloat, and so I was like the nervous panicker. I'm like, oh no, are these leaves going to get my sheep bloat? And the guys were like, no. The guy that sold them to me is like, no. Uh, honestly, they'll probably eat the they'll eat the leaves. Like they'll eat the leaves, um, but that is so true. You notice I have tons of logs out here, but not a lot of dead leaves. That's because when those limbs came came down, the sheep just chomped on them. I had this branch from a different tree fall down just yesterday, and instead of just throwing it on this pile that I'm uh, chipping, I'm going to be chipping that pretty soon. Instead of throwing it on the pile, I put it out here because they'll eat it uh, as food. So they really will eat anything that's green. Sometimes that's a bad thing because maybe there are things you don't want them to eat. But for now, we have been good. <sighs> How did I forget pasture management? Pasture management is something that takes up most of my time with these sheep. I do not have good irrigation back here. Um, I will one day. That's the dream. But uh, the sprinkler right now is actually in the front yard, so this is taking a rest for this afternoon. But uh, pasture management, guys, that is the most time-consuming part of raising sheep. Easily, you know, a half hour a day if it's just water, moving it around. Um, and these trees, like getting these trees cleaned up, that's also pasture management. It takes a lot of time. Um, that was something I did not take into account six months ago when raising sheep. Okay, and um, like I said, there's more I could talk about. I'll just say this is the last thing is I did not know six months ago is how, how that relationship would look like between attachment and gratitude and, and all those positive feelings that come with, with raising these animals mixed with the knowledge that one day you're either going to be sold for breeding stock or you're going to be meat. So these two are brothers, twin brothers right here, and, and I know that one day they're going to be meat. And that has been a lot easier for me. Um, if I could give some tips to anyone doing this for the first time, is find a buddy to trade the responsibility of, of transporting the animals to the butcher for processing. So my neighbor who lives right here, they, they're they have tons of animals as well. He used to he used to do sheep, does not anymore. And so I worked out a deal with him, where in October when I'm ready to process, um, I will help get the sheep onto his animal trailer, and he will take them for processing, and and I will compensate him with meat when when that's done, and that's going to be easier for me. He gets some free meat out of it. He you know he didn't birth these animals. Uh, I didn't birth him either. I was there for him. That's weird. Why did I talk? Well, just don't say the word birth. I was there since they were babies, and uh, and I haven't fully dealt with that yet. You know, they're still here. I'm not eating them yet, but um, it it has not been as hard as I would have expected. There's probably a magical number out there of like you know I have seven. When you have seven, it's like oh well, that's a lot. Like so, what if these two end up? going up in your freezer I don't know uh, also I haven't put put them in the freezer yet so that's gonna be, that's gonna be it's gonna be hard we'll see but as of right now I think it's been it's been okay it's been an okay process I could go on but that really sums up some of the things that I have learned about raising sheep these past uh, past six months now just over six months um, if you are considering sheep for your homestead for your farm I have really liked them. I feel like they're very low input. They're very cool animals, especially if you don't have an adult intact ram running around all the time. Um, it makes life really easy when I come out here to do chores. I can trust that my four-year-old daughter is not going to get run over by one of these animals. Um, it's, 
it's very rewarding. I, I couldn't be more thrilled to have sheep. Okay, thank you again for watching the video. Again, if it's your first time here, I hope you stick around. I hope you hit the subscribe button. We post videos at least once a week. Um, so if sheep, uh, sheep, chickens, rabbits, gardening, uh, pasture management, anything under the homesteading genre is, is in your interest, uh, consider subscribing. I think you'll like it on the channel. Until next time, I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead. I'll see you on the next video.